Ceramic capacitors are the most widely used form of capacitor in electronic circuits these days. Billions of them used each year, mainly as surface mount varieties, but also leaded ones as well. Despite their popularity though, there's a lot of mystery surrounding the different variants of the dielectrics, which go by designations such as C0G, COG, uh, NP0, Y5E, X7R and others. So in this video we're going to explain all about this so you can understand what these different designations mean and how to decipher these codes. One of the major aspects of any capacitor is its dielectric. This is the material that sits between the capacitor plates and for materials apart from air or free space it enables much higher levels of capacitance to be achieved and it governs other properties as well. This is what we're going to talk about for ceramic capacitors. But first let's take a very quick look at the ceramic capacitors themselves. There are two main types of ceramic capacitor. The leaded disc ceramic types that we see here and then we have the surface mount multi-layer ceramic capacitors or MLCCs. For the leaded ceramic capacitors, a code for the dielectric may occasionally be seen, but they're not seen on surface mount ones because of their size, they're just too small for markings. The best place to look for the dielectric is in the data sheets if one is available. If the dielectric type can be found, then you know what you're talking about, but it's almost certainly in the form of a code so we'll need to explain this. There's actually a lot of mystery surrounding these codes and dielectrics, so let's open it out. First, the dielectrics that are used fall into one of two main camps or classes. No surprise that they're called Class 1 and Class 2. There are Classes 3 and 4, but they're not standardised these days and they're not very common, so we won't worry about them. First we'll check out class 1 dielectrics, and later we'll cover the class 2 ones, so don't go away or you'll miss out. The class 1 dielectrics provide a high level of stability, and they exhibit low loss levels, and they're ideal for use in resonant circuits. These are generally very good for radio frequency circuits and other areas where low value but accurate and stable capacitors are needed. The Class 1 ceramics are based on finely ground materials using compounds like titanium oxide, often with additives such as zinc, zirconium, niobium, magnesium or other rare earths and their oxides. The different capacitors, or to be exact, their dielectrics are designated with letters to indicate their performance. We've probably all heard of C0G, or as we tend to call them, COG capacitors. The letters mean something, as we see in this table. But don't worry, there's a link to the page with the table in, in the video description area. Looking at the table, we see the first character is a letter, which gives the significant figures for the temperature coefficient, and this is given in parts per million per degree Celsius. The second character is numeric, and this gives the multiplier. And finally, the third character is a letter that gives the tolerance for the temperature coefficient. So, from this we see that a COG capacitor will have around zero drift, but with an error of plus and minus 30 parts per million per degree Celsius, which is pretty low. C0G or COG capacitors are also ref seen referred to as NP0. This is an alternative designation meaning negative positive zero, in other words, n no drift or in reality, low drift. As I said before, the Class 1 capacitors tend to be used for much lower value levels of capacitance, having accuracy and stability rather than compactness as their main feature. Now, as promised, let's turn to the Class 2 ceramics as the designations for these dielectrics follow a different system. Class 2 capacitors provide a much higher level of volumetric capacitance. In other words, they have a large capacitance for a particular volume, but this is at the expense of accuracy and stability. Often these capacitors tend to be used for jobs like coupling and decoupling in circuits, as well as a variety of other things where accuracy is not paramount. Designations such as X7R, Y5V and the like are often seen, and again these characters define the type of performance they offer. Again we see a table of what the designations mean, and this too is linked from the video description page. The first character is a letter, and this gives the low end operating temperature. The second is numeric and indicates the high end operating temperature, so we know the temperature range. 
The third and final character is a letter which indicates the capacitance change over the temperature range. So let's take the example of an X7R capacitor. This has a temperature range of minus 55 to plus 125 degrees with a change of up to plus and minus 15 percent. And another example is Y5V which has a temperature range of minus 30 to plus 85 with a change of between plus 22 and minus 82 percent. So these ceramic capacitor designations will cover virtually all the ceramic capacitors you'll encounter. For more information, please head over to the description area where there's loads more information and links where you can find out all you need to know. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and like the video.